everyone welcome to my channel or welcome back my name is Jamie and I make cleaning organizing and military videos on this channel every Sunday and Wednesday so if that's your vibe don't forget to subscribe down below if you enjoy this video hit that thumbs up button and if you have any questions that didn't get answered or something you'd like me to elaborate on please leave a comment down below I reply to everything this video is Things you should know before PCSing to Germany, part one. Now my video, as it says in the title, is pretty specific to the Grafenvier Belsec area, which is the USAG Bavaria side of Germany. Um, I do know a bit about the Kaiser Slattern area because that's where I drill because I'm a reserve soldier, but as a dependent moving to Germany on a service stamp on my husband's orders, I live in Bavaria, specifically Rosberg, Vilsack, so that's where my expertise is, but I can definitely do some research. I obviously have friends in the Kaiserslautern area and the Graf and Vilsack area. They're basically neighbors, so a lot of the things are the same, but do keep in mind anything I say could be different in a different region of Germany. So my number one thing that you should know before PCSing to Germany is driving. Not the laws, not how to drive in Germany. That's a whole different topic, but just simply, can I drive? And if so, how do I do it legally? So if you have a valid US license, you will be able to get a USERA license, US Army Europe, USERA. You will hear this acronym a lot. Um, it's not a German license. It's not a European license. It's not an international license. It's specifically for those who are associated with the military and the SOFA stamp living in Germany. So you have to have a US valid license and you have to be on a SOFA stamp or the military person on the orders. So you will take a test online, or at least that's the way I did it. When in processing, you can take the test in person, but who wants to sit through a class and then do a paper test when you can go online? And this test isn't easy. I mean, some of it's common sense, but obviously driving in Germany is not exactly the same as driving in America. And, and let me just kibosh it right now in case you're not aware, because whenever I say I live in Europe, this is one of the first things that people say. They drive on the right side of the road here in Germany. There's a few countries in the world where they drive on the other side of the road, including the UK but not Germany. So driving's more or less the same. There's a few key things that are pretty different, but more or less, it's the same. And yes, there are speed limits in Germany. Let me just say that. There are speed limits. I have a stack of speeding tickets to prove it. So you will go online on JKO. I can leave the link down below, and I could even leave the code for you if I can find it. I'm in the military, so I didn't need my husband to get me a JKO account. If you're the dependent, you're gonna need your service member to get you a JKO account because you can't stick your dependent ID into a computer and sign in. So you're gonna need an account first with JKO and then you're gonna take a practice test. Doesn't matter if you pass the practice test, you still need to take the final test. And the practice test is 400 tedious questions. Most of them are easy, but 400 questions is still 400 questions. So set some time aside to do that. And then the final test, it's been three years, the final test is 100 questions and you do need to pass both of those tests and you will get a certificate with your name, which you will then bring to the DMV on post in Grafenbeer. You'll bring your certificate, your valid US license, and I'll leave it in the link below, but I think it costs money, probably around $20. And then you'll get mailed your USERA license. So it's not like your dependent ID, they don't print it there, they mail it to you. I'm gonna block my information. It looks like this. It's green, it has a lot of information on it. They're valid for five years, so most people come over for three, but if you do get extended for whatever reason, they are valid for five years. It needs to go along with your valid US license and your dependent ID. All three of those need to go together, as well as your passports. SOFA passport, travel passport, you need both. If you want to leave Germany, you need a travel passport. This isn't good enough. This is only for government travel. So it's only for to and from where your orders are. So to the States, to Germany and back. That's all it's valid for. You need a travel passport because hopefully COVID's coming to an end. So you need to get your travel passport ASAP. And truthfully, out of all of these IDs, the only one I don't have to legally carry with me is my travel passport. I don't need that 
inside Germany and some people don't carry their visa passports at all but legally you're supposed to. I do know that during COVID people are having to make an appointment so the service member is able to get their license when they're in processing and usually your spouse can in process with you for most of those things but during COVID I know they're trying to keep it to a minimum amount of people so the dependent might have to make an appointment it might be a few days late but you do need a USERA license. Your American license by itself is not good in Germany under the SOFA law. An international license doesn't work under SOFA law. The 90 days on your American license doesn't work in Germany under SOFA law. So just keep all of those things in mind. You'll hear a lot of mumbo jumbo. Number two, if you're worried about missing certain things from America, just remember that what you can get in the US from the commissary and the PX is pretty much what you're gonna be able to get here. So there's obviously things in the US that you can't get here. There's a whole list of goods that you're not gonna be able to ship through customs. Um, there are certain foods that you're not gonna be able to get here, but for the most part, your American amenities that you're used to, you're gonna be able to get from the commissary, you're gonna be able to get from the P PX, or you're gonna be able to get them on the economy. I know being overseas, we think we're out here living in a third world country, but it's not like that at all. I still get care packages from some like military programs and from my family like sending me things like Skittles and like just random things that they think I miss from America and I'm like y'all I can get Skittles in Germany like we're not in like the desert of Iraq we're in Germany and I bet soldiers can even get Skittles in Iraq so it's it's 2020 y'all you can get anything you need in Germany and if you can't most of the time you can ship it here. Number three, I already touched on it a little bit, but your visa to live in Germany is called your SOFA. So some people, and it varies base by base. Honestly, every base in the US, from what I've gathered from different people, has different policies. So really look into your base and listen to what they are saying to you. Because just because you hear something from me or something from the internet doesn't mean that that's their policy. Fort Drum could have a different policy from Fort Hood, could have a different policy from Fort Irwin, et cetera, et cetera. But most people get a physical passport that is your official travel passport and then you get a stamp inside of it in one of the back pages explaining that this is your SOFA stamp to live in Germany from this time period to this time period. It needs to be accompanied by your official orders at all times. So your spouse's orders or your orders are supposed to be accompanied by this verifying what it says. So when you go to the airport, they want to see this and they want to see your orders and they want to know why you don't have a stamp entering Germany. So if you've never traveled on a passport or traveled internationally, when you enter the country of Germany, let's say you're just traveling here for fun. When you enter the country of Germany, they're going to stamp your passport with the date that you entered so that they know when you're supposed to leave. If you enter on your sofa, they're not going to stamp your passport because you don't have to leave for the time that it says on your orders. So you need to show them your SOFA passport and that's why you're obligated to technically carry it with you because you need to show why you as an American are legal to be in Germany. And if you're traveling in Germany, you would carry your travel passport. It's the same thing. You need to prove why you as an American are allowed to be in Germany at all times. You have different policies, different laws, and different reg regulations being affiliated with the US military. Your SOFA stamp has different policies, different laws, and different regulations than a German citizen. You have different regulations, different policies, different laws than a US citizen traveling on their travel passport. You have different regulations being a, a full-on resident of Germany, and this has all come into play during COVID. There's restrictions on borders, and you need to know what you as a military affiliated temporary resident are allowed to do. So it's important that you understand that you are not a resident, you are not traveling US citizen, and you are not a citizen of Germany. You are a temporary citizen under US military SOFA and that has different policies. Number four, if you're on those infamous Facebook pages and you ask questions or you're just kind of lurking in the background, you're gonna hear this highly debated phrase, everything is cheaper on the German economy. And by that, just off post. They, anything that's off post is referred to as the economy. So everything is cheaper on the German economy is not 
a blanket statement. Everything is not cheaper on the German economy. You have to keep in mind there's exchange rates that are always fluctuating. You and your family are getting paid in US dollars, not US euros. Also everything, well, not everything, but most things on the German economy come in smaller sizes. So they're different sizes, they're different, um, they're using different measurements, it's different money, and there's a conversion rate. There's so much to consider. And just like what your family needs specifically, how large your family is, how convenient is it to get to the German supermarkets? How convenient is it to get to the commissary? Everything is not easier or cheaper on post, and everything is not easier, better, or cheaper on the German economy. You really just have to figure out what works for your family. So don't be afraid to explore the different grocery stores. If you've ever shopped at Aldi, there's, it's obviously from Germany, so there's Aldi's over here, and I'll, there's a lot of other discount grocery stores that are similar to Aldi, and most of the grocery stores in the Grafenbier Velsec area are about the size of Aldi. There's a couple bigger stores, but there's no such thing as a Target or Walmart. And despite what people will try to convince you, there's no such thing as anything like a Target or Walmart. They really don't do big box stores like that. There's no right answer for where it's cheaper to go grocery shopping or obviously there's things that are cheaper. So toilet paper, I'm blown away with how cheap toilet paper is on the German economy, but the quality is not the same. The quality and the quantity and the size that it come in is absolutely not the same. So it's just dependent on you personally. What are you willing to give up? I buy German toilet paper for myself and my bathroom and my husband's bathroom. He buys a little bit more expensive American toilet paper because he's just convinced that it's better and that's fine. So it just depends on your personal preference. It's not everything is cheaper, everything is more expensive, blanket statement. Number five, going off of that, don't be afraid to utilize the German economy. For some, this is going to be your first international experience and your first bilingual experience. You've never communicated in another language or attempted to communicate in another language. You've never even been put in a situation where you have to and that is overwhelming. Let me tell you, it overwhelms me. I've been here three years nearly and it's still overwhelms me, but there's obviously places that I go that I just simply know that they speak English. You go to any of the restaurants and grocery stores in the area and they know that a huge population of their area are American citizens who come to Germany for a couple years and they leave Germany for a couple years and we don't stop to learn the language. At least most of us do. And if you think that's wrong, that's your personal opinion, but being in the military and having lived in multiple countries and being married to a family that also speaks another language, I just, I can't. I can't learn all these languages. I've learned the basics, I'm obviously polite, I'm completely understanding if they do not speak English, I don't expect them to speak English, but they do. Most, most, most citizens in Europe speak English. Most countries and most schools teach English from a young age, and you'll ask them if they speak English, and they always say, never fails, they always say a little bit. They are fluent, they can hold a conversation, they can answer your questions, and I mean that in like the most humbling way. They're great. I can't believe that all of these people have learned multiple languages, their education system is clearly great, and they really can communicate with you and they will communicate with you, so don't stress about shopping on the economy, trying out restaurants, exploring other countries, or speaking the language. It's not something to stress about. It's really only been a problem like once or twice in my entire three years of living here. I hope you enjoyed today's video. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to give it a thumbs up. Leave your questions down in the comments. The video ended up being way longer than expected, so there is gonna be a part two. I'm gonna talk about bank accounts, cell phone plans, home internet, housing, and how you get your mail in Germany. So if those other five topics interest you, stick around for my next video. It'll be up on Sunday. If you're watching this after November, 2020, the second video is already up and hopefully linked down in the description below. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to check out our vlog channel, our house tour here in Germany. And if you need some cleaning motivation, I have a ton of cleaning and organizing content on this channel. If you've never checked out any content like this, 
it can be addicting. So go check that out and we'll see you there.